This is about the inflammatory response of the innate immune system. Here we have the skin, and residing under the skin are phagocytes, tissue phagocytes. And also under the skin are special granulocytes called mast cells, which contain histamine granules within the cell. There are also blood vessels all around the skin. I will draw one big one for simplicity. Now inside the blood vessels, you can find red blood cells, or erythrocytes, and leukocytes, white blood cells, such as vascular phagocytes, which differ from the tissue phagocytes, and monocytes. And also circulating in the vessels are various proteins, such as mainly inflammatory mediators. So the inflammatory response begins, for example, with an injury to a body, in this case injury from a knife, which has successfully passed through the first line of defense, which was the skin and hair. This opening causes pathogens to infiltrate the body. For now, the pathogens are bacteria, which have all specific antigens on their surfaces. One of the many things that happen first is it can be that mast cells are able to recognize the invasion and begin releasing their granules containing histamine, which causes a transient increase in vascular permeability and causes vasodilation of vessel walls. Now very important to know is how your immune cells are able to recognize these bacteria pathogens. Well, it turns out that mostly all pathogens have these things called pathogen associ associated molecular pattern or PAMP which allows the immune cells to recognize them as foreigners and so initiate an immune response attracting the immune cells. PAMP is not found in the body only in foreign pathogens. Click on the pathogen associated molecular pattern link to learn more about PAMP and how it allows the immune cells to detect it. Now inside all mentioned inside the blood vessels we mentioned that there were various proteins especially the inflammatory mediators which are the essentials for the inflammatory process well there are three important ones which you can look further into the first is arachidonic acid second kinin and lastly plasmin please click on the links to look into it further otherwise continue with this presentation So again, we have the layers of the skin and blood vessels. And remember that the histamine from mast cells caused vasodilation and increased the permeability of vessel walls. Now all the blush, blood rushing around causes the signs and symptoms of inflammation, the pain, swelling and redness. The coagulation and healing process begins. Click on the link to learn more about this process, otherwise just continue. The tissue phagocytes residing under the skin are mainly special dendritic cells called Langerhan cells and the big macrophages. Please note that both are also antigen presenting cells. So once the bacteria successfully infiltrates the body with their pathogen associated molecular pattern, we learned that the mast cells begin releasing histamine causing vasodilation and increase the per vascular permeability. Now the tissue phagocytes, the macrophages and Langerhan cells, also through PAMP are able to detect these pathogens and begin secreting cytokines. Cytokines are used for communication with other cells. In this case, it will increase vascular permeability, attracting more immune cells to the injured air area and the infiltrated area. Click on the cytokines link to learn more about the various cytokines secreted during the inflammatory process and how it assists in the immune response. Now the increased permeability allows immune cells such as neutrophils and monocytes to slide through vessel walls. So as the monocytes sli slide through the vessel walls and go into the tissues, it actually becomes a macrophage. So inside the vessels there are monocytes, but once they are out, they are macrophages. And also the, phagos, the special phagocytes, neutrophils, with three lobes as its nucleus. Now neutrophils are the most abundant leukocyte found in the body. It passes through vessel walls by a process called diapodesis or emigration. Another interesting thing that occurs is that a process called um, opsonization occurs on pathogens, which basically coats 
the pathogen so that the phagocytes and other immune cells can more easily recognize and eliminate it. We will look into this opsonization uh, later on in more detail. So again here we have the skin and blood vessels. Phagocytes and antigen presenting cells such as macrophages and leukocytes are found under the skin. We learned that when the pathogen such as bacteria goes inside from an injury, the coagulation and healing process occurs. Now the pathogen associated molecular pattern allows mast cells to begin releasing histamine. And the binding of bacteria to phagocytes causes the phagocyte to secrete various cytokines which increases vascular permeability and attracts more immune cells to the area, such as neutrophils, the most abundant leukocyte and phagocyte in the body. Remember that these neutrophils come from the blood vessels through a process called diapodesis or emigration. Click on the link to learn more about this process. Now also the monocytes, um, as it leaves the vessels, the blood vessels, into the tissues, it actually becomes, we learned that it becomes macrophages. And these mac so macrophages. And these macrophages um, here, drawn here, I will denote as an MO with an X with an O. Now, our, now these MO macrophages are able to easily find and consume these pathogens, bacteria because of the pathogen associated molecular pattern and because of a process called opsonization which coats the pathogen which allows the pathogen to be easily eliminated so how does opsonization occur well there are proteins in the bloodstream mentioned earlier the kinins and plasmins which activates a group of complement proteins which initiates the complement cascade now the complement cascade can then either Op opsonize the pathogen, allowing it to be easily eliminated by phagocytes, or it can destroy the pathogen by rupturing its membrane. Click on the link to learn more about the complement proteins and how it initiates the complement cascade. So let's summarize this presentation. This is not uh, the step-by-step -step process because these processes can happen simultaneously or one before the other depending so we learned that first the injury occurs the bacteria infiltrates the body the coagulation begins the healing process begins and the signs of inflammation occur the redness swelling and pain next we can say that the mast cells because of the pattern associated rec um, pattern, the pathogen associated molecular pattern, the mast cells receptors recognize the bacteria releasing histamine causing vascular permeability and vasodilation. Now as mentioned the pathogens contain PAMP which are not found in the human body and the pathogen associated molecular pattern PAMP it basically attracts leukocytes initiating the immune response. PAMP also initiates the, in, uh, initiates the in inflammatory response, attracting inflammatory mediators such as the arachidonic acid, plasmins, and kinins. Um, the phagocytes then begin destroying the pathogens, releasing more cytokines, attracting more leukocytes, immune cells in the area. The vascular permeability and vasodilation allows more leukocytes, such as the neutrophil, to come and pass through the vessel walls more easily. And for easily spotting and destroying the pathogen, the, com the complement system, um, the cascade, is activated through the plasmin and kinin. So please click on the innate immunity antigen presenting cell to continue this presentation into the adaptive immunity. And also there are other links available if you want to learn more about other specific things. Thank you. Please comment and subscribe.